Over the last few years, the decline in logistics performance has certainly challenged our business. We have proactively sought ways to mitigate this impact by optimizing our operating model, as well as collaborating with Transnet, the All Users Forum, as well as the National Logistics Crisis Committee to improve logistics performance. However, as we know, the poor performance, especially on rail in the first half, impacted our sales. In the first quarter, sales fell by 9% compared to the fourth quarter of 2023. And during April, Kumba, together with our OUF partners, assisted Transnet with the repairs on a stacker reclaimer at Saldana. This was followed by a five-day proactive, I have to say, mini shot of both the port and rail. Improvements made as a result of the stacker reclaimer repairs, coupled with work performed during the proactive mini shot, translated into a 12% increase in sales in the second quarter. Unfortunately, we did not see the same performance uplift on rail post the mini shot. This does, however, demonstrate the powerful impact of partnerships and the difference that this can make when it comes to logistics performance. In the second half, our priority is supporting Transnet as it prepares for its annual maintenance shutdown, which will take place at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Before then, we expect the independent technical assessment to be completed in the third quarter. You'll recall that we have been talking about this for some time now. The assessment aims to expedite delivery of critical projects through mutual collaboration between the All Users Forum as well as Transnet. We also welcome the multi-party government's commitment to continue the logistics reform under the leadership of the presidency as well as National Treasury. Their Operation Volindela process is driving government and business collaboration where both practical interventions and the reforms to freight logistics policy are taking shape. These reforms support private sector participation and investment to improve our logistics network. We are also encouraged by the commitment from government that there will be an increased emphasis on implementation and delivery when it comes to the policy reforms. Kumba's product FE was 64.1%, which is above the PLAT62 index. This earned us a $5 premium. Our lump to fine ratio was 64%, adding another $5 to the overall quality premium of $10. And our ability to place products outside China and negotiate margins boosted our premiums by another $3 per tonne but the timing effects resulted in a negative $12 per ton. And this is broken down into two. $8 were attributable to products being priced one month after arrival in China. Now in a falling iron ore environment, this acts against us, but it can also reverse when prices begin to rise. $4 was due to provisional pricing effects for unpriced sales late last year. Overall, we achieved an average FOB export iron ore price of $97 per wet metric ton. While our realized price is now similar to Australian peers like Rio Tinto and BHP, it is important to note that they benefit from being much closer to China, not just from lower freight costs, but also because negative timing effects would have been far less severe due to the much shorter sailing time for them.